Diana Denmark here and rah 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 it is a Thursday or Little Friday as we call it here in Denmark. Hold up, let me just put my pom poms down. Uh, as I've told you before the Danes, we love hygge, we love to look forward to things uh, and that's why the Danes call it Thursday Little Friday. We're kind of uh, looking forward to, to the weekend coming. But what I want to give to you today is a little, uh, it's going to be a hygge video, so I hope you're, you're ready for that. If you've got uh, laundry that you want to fold or maybe you're tidying off your desk at work uh, or, or maybe if you just want to take a nice little uh, pamper time, get into your favourite uh, reading spot, your favourite chair, you might want to have a blanket over you, especially if you're, you're in Denmark today. Once again, it is freezing outside. I'm just back from my skinny dip with Helena. And you know, we, we don't use the sauna, we just, we just dip. And it was Helena's turn to bring um, the, the tea, the hot tea and snacks today. And uh, I was really glad she did because she brought some delicious homemade uh, bread rolls. And also, uh, I'll put the pictures on Instagram. Uh, but she also brought a, a spread, there was this kind of organic spread and it was chocolate, uh, caramel and uh, salt, so mm, that was very good. Anyway, um, and just to catch up with the video that I made yesterday, I was talking about anti-procrastination day yesterday. I did my task, I had to change one of the bulbs outside one of our sensor lights, that's done for a good day. And a, a job that I mentioned I think two weeks ago, I was talking about having to get our uh, winter tires changed over to summer tires. Well, go, go me, I, I've also done that. It wasn't, it wasn't me, I can't, I can't say that it was me who did it. Uh, but we had uh, the mechanic out here uh, this morning. And in uh, Denmark, uh, or in Copenhagen, where we have this uh, fairly new service. Uh, it's called Rubber Duck. And yes, I did go for it, partly because of the name, I couldn't, uh, you know, it, the, the name just sounds so funny. It, it sounds like, reminding me of Convoy, you know, from the 1970s. Anyway, um, they will actually come to your, uh, your house or your place of work and change your tires there. Instead of, you know, me loading up the car with the summer tires, driving to the uh, garage, having to wait for them to be put on, and they, they, they come and actually do it at, at your house. So that is done. Uh, and the, I, I felt so sorry for, for the poor mechanic. Uh, and, and is it just me or are car mechanics and um, uh, police officers getting younger and younger, or, or maybe we're all getting older? Uh, and I felt so sorry for him because it's, you know, it was below freezing this morning. We're actually going to probably get some more snow today. We had snow yesterday, not, not much, just a wee sprinkling. Uh, and, and this is summer, uh, sorry, not summer, uh, this is uh, coming up for Easter. Um, anyway, I, I gave him some uh, hot coffee and some biscuits, some chocolate biscuits, so he, he was very pleased. Anyway, so I've got my, my tyres on um, the car now, summer tyres, even though there will be probably snow today. Uh, I've had my, my skinny dip with uh, Helena and I wanted to go through today just an, a, a wee hygge moment with you, because uh, one of my favourite hygge things is to read books from the library, uh, to watch some some kind of film or you know some some TV series, uh, and my my music, my beloved music. So I thought we'd just go through with you today. I've got this little pile of fun stuff from our local Danish library, um, and people have asked me, do I read Danish books? In, in our public libraries here, we have a ton of stuff in English. Also in German, Swedish, uh, Arabic. I mean, we 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 have all different. Um, uh, we, we have fantastic libraries here. You can also get board games, uh, games for the Wii or the PlayStation, all things like that. Um, so I'm I'm going to go through these. First of all, let let me just maybe put the blinds down and also give something to Tweet and Sparky because they are full of the joys of spring. That uh, just hold on. Are you sitting comfortably? Then we shall begin. Okay, I'll go through uh, my books first. Um, and I started reading one last night, where is it? Yeah, uh, I've, I've shown you this one before and, and I won't go into the, the details of it. I'm sure you can find these things on Goodreads or on Amazon. This one is called The Notting Hill Mystery uh, by Charles Warren Adams. And apparently this is the first ever detective novel um, and it was written in, oh, in the 1860s. 
Uh, and I'm really in, enjoying this. I've, I've just started it, but it, it's a series from the British Library, uh, Crime Classics. They're reissuing a lot of um, classic books, and I've enjoyed some of the other ones in the series, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to reading more of that. That's going to be my pan for time today. And I always read a couple of chapters uh, when, when I go to bed at night, and that's my reading time. So if you, you haven't been reading for a while, you know, make, make the time to do it, because it really just kind of takes you away from everything else and you know takes you to a different different world uh, and you know me I love my um, crimes and cozy crimes and uh, an author that I've been reading a lot of recently is the author her name is uh, Ellie Griffiths now I've mentioned her books before she, she writes various series and these two are from the series about uh, Ruth Dr Ruth Galloway who's um, an, an archaeologist who lives on the salt marsh in England. And anyway, they, these, are, these are good because they're like cosy mysteries, though not kind of uh, too kitsch, um, kind of, you know, of our time. Um, and I've really enjoyed those. So those, and actually Ellie, Ellie Griffiths was in Denmark just the other day. I didn't realise that. She was in, um, in Horsens where they have an old... Uh, prison giving a talk at a crime writer's thing so she's been she's been and gone um, but I really love her books so th those are great if you're looking for a kind of cosy uh, British crime and so one of the you lovely ladies out there because I had mentioned Ellie Griffiths gave me a recommendation and I found the author at our local library uh, Brian McGilloway Bad Blood and this is about a female detective, uh, I shouldn't say a female detective, I mean, of course, female detectives, uh, called uh, Detective Sergeant Lucy Black. So I'm looking forward to trying that. Um, and I think that this is more of a kind of procedural crime. But anyway, well, well, I'll see how I get with that. I'll, I'll let you know. Now, this one is not from the library. And this is my beloved P.G. Woodhouse. You know, the, the, my main author that I love in the whole world is P.G. Woodhouse and I think you either love him or you don't get him uh, and I picked this isn't from the library I picked this up in a Swedish charity shop for the prince's sum of 10 Swedish uh, crowns which is like less than a dollar I mean it's way way less than a dollar and I, I enjoyed it. it it was fun but it's not a great P.G. Woodhouse and so even if I love P.G. Woodhouse, even if P.G. Woodhouse is my favourite author, I'm not going to hang on to it. I'm going to release this one and I'm going to take it to the book exchange or I'll maybe put it in the bag for, the, for our next close swap party. Um, and, and I know many of you are very precious about your books, but you know what, if you're not going to read it again, you don't love it and you're not, you know, you have to make up your mind here. Are you having a collection? Or are you going to have books that you actually enjoy and read and you know you you've got to figure it out if, if your uh, collection is taking over the whole house then maybe you want to think about what what you actually have but i'm willing to let go of this one and maybe somebody else will be encouraged to read uh, pg woodhouse but i'm not holding on to that one uh, and then a book about kyoto because we are going back to japan for uh, in the summer my daughter is going to be there on a school program on her own in, in um, Tokyo for three, four weeks. And we're going over to join her there and then we'll have a family holiday and then come back to Copenhagen. And we've been to Tokyo before. I've been to Tokyo twice, loved it, loved Japan. Um, so this time we're probably also going to go to Kyoto and uh, one of the uh, islands and do some touring. So, so we're kind of, uh, delving into all, all those kind of uh, things right now, doing a lot of research. And then I found some fun magazines that I thought we'd share with you. Uh, right, let's start with, I, I mentioned this one to you last time. This is, I think, a British magazine. And in our library, the most current issue, you can't, uh, you can't borrow it because it's in the reading room for everybody to enjoy. You, you've seen my... my um, I've made several videos about our fantastic libraries and, and you can see this one there. But the now they're on to like their April May edition. So I've borrowed this one and you can see it's all full of the lovely spring pictures. And we've got lilacs on the front though, which is a bit weird actually because lilacs are not going to be out here until probably the end of summer, like uh, July, August. Anyway, you know, it looks good. 
So I'm going to have a look at that. And this is one of those lifestyle magazines. And I found two other fun ones in the lifestyle magazine section. And this one is um, it's either American or Canadian. And it's called Tap, Tap Root. Um, and it's called the magazine, here we go, for makers, doers and dreamers. And it's all about, you know, preserving things and making things. I'll give you a wee look inside. Um, and, and I thought this was really funny. It was something about um, rug, what, what do you call it? Rug hooking. Um, I, I don't know if you remember, a long time ago, I had an implement that I had found in some knitting stuff. And I didn't know what it was. And I asked on, uh, on one of my YouTube videos, what, what is this implement? And it was a thing for doing these weird 1970s uh, rugs. And I had so many comments about this rug hooking thing. I'd never heard of it. I'm, I'm not really into, you know, patchwork and sewing and stuff like that. Anyway, uh, there are lots of ideas in here. If you want to make a spring meadow flower crown out of uh, crepe paper. And there are, you know, recipes, uh, recipes for face creams. Uh, and... This one here is called Millennial Face Gunk Alasana. Um, it's using hemp. Have you noticed that hemp is the flavour of the month right now? I mean, you see hemp cakes and hemp hair care, and it's just one of those really in uh, in things right now. So anyway, you might want to have a wee look at that. I, I've had a look through it. It's not really my my thing, but you may enjoy it. And another one that caught my eye was this one. Now it's called Junkies, which of course in British English uh, means somebody who's, you know, a drug user, drug, drug abuser. Uh, but it's, it says here, rethink, reuse, reduce, recycle. So it's all about how to, you know, use your junk and let's not waste things and uh, restyle them, upcycle, recycle, zero waste, all the, all the buzzwords. Um, Again, it's not really my thing, but you can see some of the uh, fashions using old bits of clothing. Um, but I, I think with, with, with my clothes, I, you know, I like to paint, uh, you know, jewellery or paint leather shoes and stuff. Uh, but any clothes that I'm not wearing, I, I pass them on to the, the clothes swap party. But again, you know, they've got recipes and um you know interesting artists and oh baba ganoush yum yum it's making me hungry so this one is called junkies and then i've got a couple of danish magazines that I also thought you you might be interested in. and i you probably don't speak danish but this one now this is actually from last year but it just shows you that you know the magazines it's the same thing year after year you know it's spring so we have all the spring flower arrangements and uh, you know lamb uh, all, all the uh, fresh spring vegetables stuff like that now this magazine as you can hear the name is called Isabella's now this magazine used to um, was owned by Isabella Smith and if you've been watching my channel for a while you will have heard the name Isabella Smith before because my, you know, you know the products that I use in the kitchen, you know, when you see my shiny sink photo on Instagram at the end of the day. Um, you know, I, I dry out my sink and you see my little sink caddy and the products that are in there, you know, the environmentally friendly, not tested on animals, good for environment. Um, those are by Isabella Smith. So she used to have her own magazine. She sold it on to, so it's not her doing this any longer. Um, but again, it's... Um, you know, all ideas for spring decorations, and you've got food. Um, Isabella Smith was um, very into uh, gardening. She still has her own uh, website at isabellasmith.com where she has, you know, the cleaning products, and there's clothes, and there's household items, uh, you know, pottery and knickknacks and all, all that kind of jazz. Anyway, there, there you go, that's Isabella's. But these, these are nice magazines just to kind of leaf through and, uh, you know, while you're enjoying a cup of coffee. Though there is one thing, and I don't know if it annoys you as well, but I was looking, where was it? There's a, there was a good recipe for something or something that looked interesting. Well, this was like a spring menu for entertaining and I thought, oh, that looks nice. And then when you actually look 
for the recipe, some person has torn it out. Can't they just take a photo with their smartphone? What, you know, are there still people who tear things out of library magazines? There's a place in hell for people who do that. Anyway, uh, I'm, I'm sure I can find the recipe online. And the last one I want to show you is a magazine. Um, now, this is a monthly, can't remember if it's a monthly or maybe every fortnight, every two weeks, uh, called Hennis Verden, which means her world. Uh, and the probably the target age group for this one, I'll show you it somewhere over them on the back, uh, are probably women over 50, 60, 70. And it's a lot of um, articles on, uh, you know, usual lifestyle stuff and a lot of things of um, how to, you know, knit, crochet, um, make, make stuff. And the reason I picked up this one, it looks quite funny, um, is how to make four different pairs of sootsko. Now, sootsko is the Danish word for slippers. And I've mentioned this before, in, in Denmark, we don't wear shoes inside the house. When you come into somebody's house, you take off your shoes and often there will be a basket of slippers, you know, for guests, or you walk around, or, or um, big thick uh, woolly socks. That, that's also a classic here. Uh, and workers, when they come into your house, they'll remove their, their shoes as well. Or, uh, like me, you'll wear a pair of indoor shoes, uh, which are called uh, Kina school or Mao school, which is little Chinese, uh, like little Chinese, um, what do you call them, gym shoes. J just, um, and, and those are ones which you only wear in the house, like, like the fly lady thing of wearing you know, a pair of lace-up sho indoor shoes, only for in the house. You don't wear them anywhere else, so, so they're not kind of making a mess on your floors. Anyway, uh, this magazine had four different uh, suit school that you can make. And the word school in Danish uh, means shoe. And suit, uh, suit in Danish is actually a dummy, you know, a, a pacifier. Uh, at suda means to suck. So, so it's kind of sucky, sucky shoes. Let me see if I can find them. Oh, here we are. Here's the, here's the different suit school that you can make. So if you come to Denmark, you know, bring your suit school with you. So there's one pair there, and then we've got another fluffy pair, and then a kind of green green ones which are made of felt, uh, and the last ones are made of cotton. So there you go. <laughs> lots, lots of ideas if you, make, if you want to make some <laughs> sucky shoes. Uh, and now I've gone through all the books uh, and the magazines, uh, a couple of films that have come onto my radar recently just you know, when we're talking about books, magazines, music, you know, all the fun stuff. Uh, and I, I wrote it down my wee, my wee board here so I wouldn't forget. Uh, my brother put a link on Facebook the other day about a Jim Jarmusch film. Now, if you know Jim Jarmusch films, you know kind of which genre we're going into. He, he makes quite uh, narrow films, you know, so it's not, it's not for everybody. But I, I think it was called The Dead Don't Die. I, I can't quite remember. I'll need to look it up. Uh, and it's a zombie film and y you know I'm not really into zombie stuff like The Walking Dead but I have mentioned that we watched a South Korean film called Train to Busan and my daughter and I we love it we now have the DVD and it's a riot I mean really it's a roller coaster of emotions when, when you watch that film and it's you know you're screaming with laughter and then you're crying because it's so sad it's really fast paced and fast zombies and then after that, we watched recently, I mentioned on Netflix, the series that's called Kingdom, which is set in medieval times uh, with the men with all the fancy hats and, oh, the, the bad emperor and emperor's daughter. Anyway, uh, you'll, 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 you can go and have a look at that. But my brother had mentioned uh, this film and it, I, I watched the trailer for it and it looks really great because it's got... Um, Bill Murray, I think, is the main character now. He's the uh, the small town sheriff in some kind of small American town, and of, of course, there's some kind of zombie invasion. And Iggy Pop is in it, kind of looking like his regular self. And Tom Waits. So, and and the music seems fantastic. So, I'm really looking forward to that. I think it's coming out in June or July, but you can you can keep a lookout for it. Um, and the other film that I haven't seen yet, and I don't know why I haven't seen it yet is the new Avengers film, Endgame. 
I love Iron Man. Iron Man is my hero. And in, I'm not so mad about the Avengers films, but if Iron Man is in it, and also the new uh, Spidey, Spider-Man, I think they're a great duo. So and we're hoping to see that over the Easter break. The, the kids are going to be on holiday um, next week because Danish schools are on holiday the week before Easter and then um, we have Easter Monday and then on Tuesday they go back to school. You know, just if you don't know about that. Uh, and somebody asked me the other day about, you know, uh, I always mention that I'm always listening to music. Like when, when I'm doing, when I'm cleaning up in the kitchen, uh, finishing off my evening routine, uh, when I'm working, writing at the computer, I'm, I'm listening to music. When I'm running outside, I've got my little headset on, I'm, I'm listening to music. I listen to music or I listen to something all day long. That, that, that's how I focus best. I can't focus with complete silence. Unless I'm in bed sleeping, then I want it completely silent. You know, earplugs, I, I can't have any noise. But during the day, music is my motivator. And some people ask me, well, what do you listen to? I, I grew up with um, punk music. Punk, is, punk music is my first love. And, my, and I've seen all the bands, I mean, uh, Buzzcocks, uh, Stranglers, uh, The Clash, I mean, I've seen them all, you know, when, when I was young. And actually my first ever concert was the Buzzcocks with Joy Division as support. You know, Joy Division, Ian Curtis, who committed suicide, no longer with us. Uh, that was my first ever concert and my first ever love is uh, the Buzzcocks. Anyway, uh, Buzzcocks and then I went from, you know, punk through new wave, uh, electronic music. But the, the things that I listen to most now, are, I still listen to punk and I, my favourite genre are uh, house music. I love house music uh, all night long. Uh, and also um, what is now known as EDM, electronic dance music or electronica. And I change up my playlist, especially for things like when I'm running or cleaning. I change it up weekly. I, I like to have something fresh on it. And I've got one, one track that I've been playing 24-7. You know, if I'm out, I was out gardening at the weekend and I had it on like, repeat, I don't know how many times I listened to that song. And it's just something that has got one of those tags that just catches you. Anyway, I thought I would share it today just for fun. Uh, it's by a Norwegian DJ called uh, Todd Terje. Now, don't confuse Todd Terje with Todd Terry. Todd Terry is, you know, iconic house uh, music um, DJ producer. But Todd Terje, who's Norwegian, he actually made up his uh, kind of artist name as uh, a tribute to Todd Terry. I love Todd Terry as well. Anyway, he's, he's, uh, Todd Terje has a new album out and uh, he's a DJ. Uh, and the track I've been listening to is called uh, Strandbar. Now, Strand in Danish, Strand uh, in Danish and in Norwegian, and um, also Swedish, yeah, uh, means um, the beach. And bar is a bar, so I, I think it just means beach bar. Uh, oh, another thing was Hot Chip have got a new album coming out, and, and, and their new single is out, so I've, I've been listening to them. So, anyway, that was just a wee roundup some music and movies and uh, I love my cordless headphones. If you haven't got a pair of cordless headphones, you don't know what you are missing out. I have these on everywhere and also I quite like it because when I have my cordless headphones on, the family <laughs> the family will kind of leave me alone because it's like, oh, mum's listening to music. So I kind of get, even if I'm not listening to anything, I can get a be in my little zone. So anyway, um, I'm going to get on and put my uh, magazines and books in my pamper basket. And remember, if, if you have got lots of magazine subscriptions, maybe you need to look at, you know, are, are they just coming in and are you just piling them somewhere or are you actually reading them? You know, maybe now is the time where you can kind of uh, cut down on what you have. Anyway, or make sure that you read them. Get them in the pamper basket and read them. So anyway, on that note, live long and prosper. May the Danish figure be with you and I shall see you very soon. Okay, bye for now.